These bloodlines were known in the ancient world under different symbols and different codes like children from heaven and earth and um, children of the gods, children of the sky. And another big symbol of these um, gods, these serpent gods, were the watchers. They were called the watchers. This is widely, widely found. And that's why there's an eye, as Credo Mutwa confirmed, on that hand on the necklace of the mysteries. That's the watchers. That's the serpent gods. And that's why we have the eye on top of the pyramid, the all-seeing eye on the dollar bill, and why that is a massive Illuminati symbol in the secret society network. They are the gods overseeing the pyramid of control. One way uh, that they often symbolize these hybrid bloodlines in the ancient world was as part human down, down to the bottom of the torso and then the legs or the bottom part being a snake. You come across this a great deal when you research this stuff. This is all symbolic of this half human, half snake symbolism. Over and over and over again you see it. And the, the cobra, like I say, is very much uh, a common symbol of these serpent gods, as is fighting the serpent gods and battles with them. Even uh, the word Messiah comes from Mesa, the Nile crocodile, which they use the oil from the Nile crocodile to anoint the pharaohs. And even today in the British coronation um, ceremony, they symbolize that as part of our own ceremony appropriately. Um, in the Bible, the devil is symbolized or described in reptilian terms. The old serpent called the devil and Satan who deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Fallen angels, again the recurring theme. All these folk tales about uh, kissing frogs and turning into princes and uh, invariably uh, you get reptilian themes, all part of the same story. And people send me images from all over the world as a result of the information I've put out. It's amazing how many times you see the symbol of reptile and humans, or part human, part reptile, or overseeing the gargoyles in the, the palaces and castles and churches of this elite are symbolic of that. And of course, over the last, oh, I don't know, 20 years or so, there's been a mass of reptilian symbolism in children's stories and children's entertainment. And then recently, I mean, you saw this, it's a quick one, they, this 16th century painting in the National Portrait Gallery of Queen Elizabeth I, they thought she was holding flowers because that's what someone had painted over. But with where, um, what's underneath is coming to light. And this is a representation of it. It was in one of the papers. Again, holding the snake. Very, very appropriate. And these um, aristocratic families, which became the hybrids, again, used reptilian dragon and all these other serpent images on their various coats of arms and what have you. And one of the centers, like I said earlier, is London. Not Lo necessarily London, the great conurbation, but the city of London and the temple that runs into the city of London. The city of London, of course, being the great center of not just British finance, but global finance. And how appropriate that they, too, have the symbol of the flying dragon and the symbol of the Knights Templar Secret Society, a major strand in this web of secret societies, as the very symbol of the city of London. You pass these as you go into the city, of course. Another theme you find with images around the world is of serpents eating humans. And not nice, it isn't, of course, but they do eat humans. When these um, reptilians uh, come into visible light, they use humans as their food, like humans use animals, cattle, sheep. And then um, you'll see the recurring theme all over the world. This is in Central America, the Mayan area. This is uh, a painting by uh, Credo Mutwa from uh, South African myths of the serpent gods, the Chitahuri eating humans. And this is Alfa Romeo. What's he doing there? What's he bloody doing there? Same thing. And in uh, the garden of one of the palaces or whatever you call them, mansions of Silvio Berlusconi in Italy, the leader and one of the world's most corrupt men, is again the same image. And outside of visible light, they feed off human energy, human emotion, especially, well, only low vibrational emotion because that's all they can really access. And so they have to keep humans in a state of mental and emotional suppression so that we keep uh, feeding out this energy which they then absorb and um, that will become relevant in the, the next section when I get into why pedophilia is so widespread among this elite because um, 
energy changes with the emotions we give out. When we give out love, it's a certain wavelength. When we give out hate, it's a very different wavelength. And uh, the friend of mine in, um, in, in Japan has became very well known for taking water, name's Mr. Emoto, taking water, putting it in um, a container, and then he'll put words of love or hate or whatever on the side of it, because when you write a word, that word may seem in the decoded realm as a word you can see and read, but in the vibrational realm, it represents a vibration. If you could see the vibration of, of writing the word hate to the word, writing the word love, it would be dramatic. In fact, you're looking at it. Because what happens is, he, after he's put the word um, on the side of the water, he then freezes the water really, really fast. I've seen his laboratory where he does it. And then he photographs the crystals. This is the crystal from a water that had love and appreciation written on it. This is the crystal that had hate written on the side of the water. And he's done whole books about, about this stuff with all these pictures in it. And this is the energy that these entities absorb when they're outside of visible light, which is most of the time. And therefore, they have to keep us in a state that keeps producing that. All this vampire stuff, because they drink human blood with invisible light because it carries the human genetic code and allows them to hold their vibrational compatibility with this reality for longer before they have to get the hell out of it. That's why they drink so much blood. And then there's this thing about um, shape-shifting, where, you know, I've had a lot of, you know, laughter and ridicule, so what's bloody new about this? And people say, um, well, you, you can't go from a solid body to a solid body and back again. And I'm saying, do you know? I agree with you. Of course you can't. But that's not what's happening, because there is no solid body. It's all happening as a decoding system. There is no solidity. So, what shape-shifting is, is you have a situation like this and the, f the, f the front f dominating from our perception of, of, of observation energy field is the human one. So we look at George Bush or somebody and we see a human. But sometimes, especially at times of high emotion, this shift can happen where the reptilian field comes forward. And as it does so, becomes the dominant one, often briefly, the observer now starts decoding that. And then it shifts back and you start decoding this. And to, to the observer decoding that shift, creating the holographic reality in their head, which is where everything happens, to their observation, someone's gone from a human to a reptilian and then back to human again. It's not, of course, shifting solidity. She's a hologram like... We're all holograms and they can shift. This is where shape-shifting happens, what we call physical shape-shifting, illusory, in our heads. So the road to tyranny began when these reptilians arrived. Um, the Lyrian star system, for all intents and purposes, is where humanity ex began. That is the home area of all of humanity. There was also a star system called the Draco star system. And that was basically a reptilian empire. And the reptilians have a mindset where they feel an obligation to seek out and destroy or assimilate all other uh, creatures or species because they feel the reptilian life form is the most perfect representation of God or God mind. And the reason that they feel that way is because reptilians in the Draco star system are androgynous, meaning male and female in the same body. And so they feel that most closely represents the neutral uh, God mind or God energy. Also, reptilian DNA does not change over eons of time. It basically stays the same and does not uh, alter, whereas mammalian DNA constantly changes and adapts uh, as environments change. And so they feel that because reptilians are so stable in genetics, it proves that they're superior. The constellation of Umhambi, the one who travels very, very far away. And we call this constellation also the constellation of Matsieng, the giant who was sent by God to this earth and now ABC is coming out 
Disney ABC is coming out with a new remake of V, and in it the extraterrestrials that look like humans, who are bringing a quote new order to the world, and the pamphlet in the movie is called Dawn of a New Day. I was said, wow, I cannot believe how overwhelmingly obvious this secret symbol is now becoming. I have seen the stone. I have smelt them. I have I have had personal experience of these. And there are people who claim that these creatures are gods. There are people say, who claim that these creatures are experimenting on us. That is a lot of rubbish. They are carnivorous. They are not friendly to mankind, um, at least the ones that are here. There are 1,833 of them that have been living underground between 100 and 200 miles beneath the surface. They've been here, some of them have been here a long, long time. What have you seen them do? I've seen all of them drink human blood and consume human flesh, and uh, they have their own um, goblets in which they have blood and these, these goblets are encrusted with jewels um, and they also have their own daggers and that, that the dagger goes into the goblet and they stir the blood around with it and it, it's also a um, what it is, it's a symbol of a a phallus going into the vagina. Uh, you talked about your lineage just like your Rothschilds, and uh, they have been uh, intermarrying with what the public calls aliens, and um, so that these people aren't human as we would know human. They've been pretty thoroughly demonized. If we go back in time, the chief advisor to Queen Elizabeth I, Sir John Dee, he was a Kabbalistic black magician. Of uh, He uh, had gone to the continent and learned from the top Jewish Kabbalists black magic and he was the chief advisor in the, in the British Empire and he created Enochian magic and the Enochian language which uh, the Illuminati, which are hiding behind the Jehovah's Witness headquarters, they, they uh, in, use Enochian rituals. That's why the power of the uh, uh, Enochian magic is the Watchtowers. That's why they call it the Watchtower Society. They can never say eat humans? Yes. And they need to be, they won't eat a dead human. It has to be alive at the time of the killing. Their preference is children. You know, and we've been told, we've been told, you shouldn't talk about that. You know, there are other people. You know, oh, you know, why not? According to the Andromedans, they're responsible for 31,712 children disappearing in the last 25 years from the United States. These children were food. And I'm supposed to just shut up and not say anything about it because people don't want to hear it. That's tough. That's tough. You know, Westchester County, in the last five years, 3,000 children in Westchester County, New York, have vanished without a trace. Where are they going? Why are we allowing this to happen? Uh, yes, um, I have seen at rituals, I have seen George Bush, um, I have seen um, Madeleine Albright, I have seen Henry Kissinger, uh, I have seen uh, Ronald Reagan. Um, and I have also, by the way, uh, seen his wife, Nancy Reagan. I have seen Hillary Clinton before I knew she was Hillary Clinton uh, at the time um, at these rituals. She is involved. Um, the other people that I have named and are, as I have seen shapeshift into reptilians. Uh, I have not seen Hillary Clinton actually shape shift, but I, she is involved. <laughs>